Welcome to Christ the Lord Clearwater's weekly message. I'm Pastor John Back is here in our studio in Clearwater, Florida, where we share the good news of Jesus on the Gulf Coast. You're joining us as we continue our message series called Uncovered. Humankind can't go out and discover the things of God, but God reveals Himself to us. He uncovers His salvation plan in Jesus and wisdom for living in the Bible. Today's uncovered truth is a new response to being wronged. It's based on words from the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. In 1953, the chemical rocket company was experimenting with compounds that they could apply to the metal exterior of the Atlas rockets to inhibit corrosion on these rockets. After several experiments and iterations, they came upon, upon a product, try number 40, called WD-40. We still know it today as a common uh, lubricant and rust inhibitor. WD-40 stands for water displacement, number 40. I want to use WD today to teach about our response to being wronged. WD in the product stands for water displacement, but today I want to use it to refer to wrongs done. How do we respond when wrongs are done to us? I want to talk to you about this because the human instinct does not get this right. If you would join us on Sunday mornings, our church family is reading the history of humankind in the book of Genesis. And there we encounter the wrong human instinct, WD-77. WD-77 is the approach that Lamech took, a descendant of Cain, the first murderer. Lamech was a man who collected women. He seemed to have a propensity toward violence. We're, just, we're told that Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, listen to me. Wives of Lamech, hear my words. I've killed a man for wounding me a young man for injuring me. If Cain, who murdered his brother, is avenged seven times, then I, Lamech, 77 times. 77 times. If you come after me wrongly, I'm going to come after you 77 times harder. You take a shot at me, I'm going to put 77 bullets into your back. WD-77. If I am wronged, I'll hit back 77 times harder. Why does Lamech say this to his wives? Why is he telling his wives how dangerous he is? When the best construction, maybe he's telling them, you're so safe with me. Any threat that comes to our family, I'll put down. But men who seem to have the approach to life like Lamech aren't necessarily protectors, but they seem to be destroyers. There's this power play in telling somebody next to you how dangerous you are because if you ever get the idea of messing with me, you know what I did to that other guy? I come after you just as hard. WD-77 is when there's a threat of force, increased force. You do wrong to me, and I promise you, you will not want what you're going to find. Like You mess with the bull, you get the horns. The point of force is to deter. Or, if you actually follow through on your threat to wrong me, I'm going to destroy you. It's the approach that Al Pacino took in the classic film Scarface. When threats to his power were trying to push against him, what did he do? He pulled out more force to deter and then destroy them. Pulled out a weapon and fired away. The famous line, say hello to my little friend. That's a WD-77 approach to people wronging us. When wronged, the human instinct is to reach for a force multiplier. Someone that can take the wrong that you bring into my life and throw it back or counterattack with increased force. I will overcome my enemy with deterrence. You don't even want to touch this. Because when you wake up, what I will do to you, oh, you'll regret it. Or, I will overcome my enemy with deterrence by destruction. You won't survive if you come after me. 
This happens in arguments. It happens in bar fights. It happens in petty rivalries. It happens in the, the movie world where Regina George, the queen bee, is messing with her peers in high school. It's what's symbolized in this way in as the fighter is clearly demonstrating if you step one step closer to me, you're going to get pow, pow, one, two right to the face. Our new responses to being wronged are different from these instincts. The Apostle Paul said, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. If it's possible, and it may not always be, as far as it depends on you, I know there are other people involved, but as far as it depends on you, if it's possible, live at peace with everyone. And one way to do this practically is to take the approach of the F-117 stealth fighter. The F-117 has some characteristics that allow it to avoid conflict when it wants to. One of the characteristics, first of all, is that it has a special radar absorbent paint on it. It takes incoming radar threat and just soaks it up into its own painted body. It's this black thing. It's not colored gray, the color of the sky, but it's black. That heavy paint takes on and absorbs the radar. And that's what God's own approach was to wrongdoing that came into his life. The famous prophecy about Jesus was in Isaiah 53. As a lamb before his, its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In Jesus' life, this was fulfilled as he was executed unjustly. The people who were attacking him were sending insults and lies against him. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin, those in control of local government and the local church, were looking for false evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death. They did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What's this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. Like an F-117, when those radar threats were coming at him, he did not engage. But he remained a sheep silent before its shearers on its way to slaughter. Like radar absorbent paint, he absorbed and took into himself wrongs that were done. And that's painful. It was painful for Jesus and it's painful to us, to our pride, to our ego, to absorb wrongdoing. Because mercy hurts. It hurt Jesus. In fact, He took on pain so that He could be merciful to us. That was His death on the cross where He endured suffering so that we might be forgiven. Mercy hurts. It's different from our instinct, which is to counterattack, to give back what we've received and more. The Apostle Paul talked about this in a Christian congregation in Corinth. He wrote, The very fact that you Christians have lawsuits among you means you've been completely defeated already. Why not rather be wronged by somebody? Why not rather be cheated by somebody? Absorb the wrong. Instead, you yourselves cheat and do wrong and you do this to your brothers and sisters in the faith. Paul actually said, why not rather be wronged than hit somebody back with the same type of wrong that they aimed at you? Why not rather be cheated? You see, to respond in kind, Paul said, is a sort of defeat in itself. So how exactly do we endure the injustice and the indignant um, feeling of being wronged? Well, we can absorb hurt and not just let it in us, but we can, we can respond with intercessory prayer. To pray, Lord, as evil comes into my life, I pray that You would replace it with good. Either change something, bring a new way of thinking, a new birth, a new resurrection into the life of that person whose instincts are death and their anger and their darkness and transform their evil into light. And if it comes into my life, take this difficult experience that I've had to endure and transform it into something that strengthens me and, and brings uh, resilience and perseverance and teaches me maturity. Let me be like this stealth fighter that absorbs the wrongs, absorbs the radar waves, and in doing so, avoids conflict. 
That stealth fighter has a second characteristic that helps it. It's got this unique shape. It's angular. It's a beast to fly. They need computers to fly it because it's not meant to cut through the air smoothly, but it's this jagged thing. The picture you see shows the silhouette of the airplane, which is meant to redirect radar waves into a different place than the source from which they came. They were meant to bounce the radar somewhere else. We also, when we are wronged, can take this wrongs done approach to leave room, as Paul says, for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. What this means is that we can make use of not just intercessory prayer, Lord, redeem that person's evil and replace it with good or turn it into good, but imprecatory prayer. That's warfare prayer. Lord, destroy the evil coming against me. In the days of God's people in the Old Testament, they were uh, captives after a, an invasion of their homeland. The Jewish people were taken into Babylon and there they were given uh, two types of prayers. One was through the prophet Jeremiah who told them, even though you're captives in a land and you can't leave, you're in somebody else's city, somebody else's homeland, pray for your oppressors. Pray for your captors. Pray for the peace of the city in which you're now forced to live. That's an intercessory prayer. But at the same time, in the book of Psalms, we hear a second type of prayer. A prayer against evil. A prayer that those who bring evil would reap the fruit of their, their labors. The prayer says, O oh Lord, break off the teeth of my enemies in their mouth. In the rough neighbors, neighborhood, this would be a place where you get curb stomped. Put your face against a curb and your enemy kicks the back of your head into the concrete. Knock their teeth out in their mouth. It was the imprecatory prayer of a people who watched these invaders take their children and, and hurl them against rocks, breaking their bodies open. And the prayer was, Lord, for those people who do this kind of thing, may they experience the exact same pain that they caused. If that's the measure they're going to use to make their way to, through life, well, may you use that measure onto them. So these people who are hurting us by hurting our children, may they know exactly what that feels like. An imprecatory prayer where a call for justice is placed into the hands of God. God responds with justice. In fact, God cares about justice more than anyone cares about justice. That's His concept of holiness. If anything, we... Um, we underestimate the commitment that God has to good. For He tells us in the Scriptures that without Jesus and without the new, new birth that makes our lives um, redeemed, God will only come against evildoers as a consuming fire, as a God of wrath, as someone who will settle all accounts. He does this in eternity in a place called hell where those who are wronged will be vindicated. It's hinted at in the Bible book of Revelation as we're waiting for the restoration of all things. There's this group of people who had been hurt and wronged and their souls are collected underneath an altar and their voices are crying out, How long, O Lord, until You avenge us on those who, who shil, uh, spled, shed or spilled our blood? They're crying out for vengeance, but they're giving it to the Lord. Like an F-117 letting radar waves bounce off them in different directions. When wrong came, they called out, Lord, deal with this. God Himself will bring wrath to those who do wrong. In eternity, in the final judgment, but also sometimes here on earth using another agent of wrath. The government or the justice system. Romans 13, governing authorities are God's servant. Agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. So these are ways that we can address wrongs that come into our life. We can use an intercessory prayer. You can use imprecatory prayer. And we can use the justice system. The important thing though is that we, we be able to distinguish what the motives are in our own heart. Can we distinguish between justice, which is a, a love of right, 
and revenge, which is a desire to hurt and destroy with malicious intent. Can you determine the difference between filing a lawsuit for justice and filing a lawsuit for simple revenge? Can you distinguish between what is a a competition where aggression and force is part of the game we're playing and a mugging or an assault in a place somewhere? Be forceful in competitions. If you're athletic, go hit the athletic field or the court with all your energy and muscle. If you are standing for justice or seeking it, be forceful in court. If you're a soldier fighting for the ideals, the righteous ideals of a nation, be forceful in war. Be forceful in prayer. But do not be a force multiplier. Do not be an evil multiplier. Do not respond to wrong dones with 77 times more wrongs back at somebody. Do not be like Scarface. Do not be like the character Regina George. Do not be someone known for your interest in getting into a fight anytime someone steps a little too close. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Well, mercy hurts. It hurts to absorb wrong, to have to deal with it and not be cruel back. But mercy also overcomes evil. To illustrate how this happens, I want to talk to you about noise cancellation, a feature found on some of the world's most popular headphones, Sony's WH-1000XM series. These headphones are known for actively canceling out noise that is coming into your ears from around you. How this noise canceling technology works is sound waves around us are a wave that goes up and down, highs and lows. These headphones detect what waves are coming in from the, the fire truck or the people chatting nearby or the, the sound of traffic. And those sound waves are then counteracted by the exact inverse type of wave. So the headphones play an opposing sound wave so that when there's a a loud exterior sound that's a wave like this, the headphones project an opposite wave and when those two inverse waves meet, they cancel out and result in silence. There's peace when a evil wave is opposed by a good uh, beneficial wave and then noise cancellation takes place and all is left is the beautiful signal of your music. That's what Paul says. He says, overcome evil by neutralizing it with good. That's what Jesus said when, when He said, if somebody wrongs you, turn to Him the other cheek. If someone is trying to get from you, well, give them what they want. Do unto others what you would have done to you. We are not force multipliers, Christians. What are we? We are patience multipliers. We are generosity multipliers. We are mercy multipliers. We are honesty multipliers. We are integrity multipliers. We are multipliers of everything that is good and faithful. And when when wrongs come into our lives, we do not respond with increased force. Instead, we respond with increased love. That's our new response to being wronged.